Spaghetti Western is a term used to describe movies in the Western genre made by Italian filmmakers in the 1960s and 70s. Spaghetti Westerns often utilize the same stylistic devices and plot tropes. They also reused a lot of the same actors, including many international stars, and crew members like composers and cinematographers. Spaghetti Westerns are known for their amazing music and stylized cinematography, and these films featured cynical anti-heroes and were often more violent and morally gray than a traditional Western. They were inspired by classic Westerns, and the Italian directors clearly had lots of respect for their predecessors, but they took the genre in a new direction. They were crucial in the development of the subgenre known as revisionist westerns, which turned the conventions of traditional westerns on their heads. Spaghetti westerns not only changed the genre forever, but also inspired filmmakers who make all kinds of cinema. When it comes to spaghetti westerns, there's a very clear place as to where to start, and that's the work of a legendary Italian director, Sergio Leone. Specifically, his three films, collectively known as the Dollars or Man With No Name trilogy, are the starting point for most making their journey into the genre. The first, A Fistful of Dollars, came out in 1964, and while it wasn't the earliest Italian Western, it undeniably started the trend of spaghetti westerns. At the time, the majority of films in the western genre portrayed a world with a cut-and-dry morality and virtuous, incorruptible heroes. In Leone's film, Clint Eastwood's cynical character, referred to as the man with no name, what does a young boy get shot at, seemingly uncaring? He's unshaven and dirty compared to the typical Western hero, and instead of being selfless, he's opportunistic and looks out for himself, like many spaghetti Western protagonists. And he has a dry, sarcastic sense of humor. It's not just the characters that were different, but the settings, as the towns were shown as gritty and dirty. This was all part of a greater realism, that included harsher, more sadistic violence. Leone's Western also introduced a new visual style to the Western, with kinetic editing and stylish cinematography. He combined extreme close-ups with drawn-out long shots in a way that skillfully created tension. And Leone often used zooms, a technique that would become a trademark of spaghetti Westerns. Leone also gave the film a stylish, bold opening credit sequence, which too would be prevalent in the genre. And of course, I have to mention the excellent music from Ennio Morricone. This was the first of dozens of spaghetti westerns he composed the score for, and his sound became inextricably associated with the genre. Morricone is one of the most respected film composers of all time, has won an Oscar and been nominated six times, and has worked with directors like Quentin Tarantino, John Carpenter, and Oliver Stone. Morricone scored all three films in the trilogy and was yet another way in which the film went against genre conventions. Leone didn't want the traditional orchestral music common in westerns, and as a result, Morricone changed the way film music is thought of by including unusual sounds, like whistling, gunshots, and whips cracking. His soundtrack was not just incidental, but an essential part of the movie. These stylistic elements are part of why Leone's films achieve the rare feat of appealing to both cinephiles looking for art and mainstream movie fans looking for entertainment. A Fistful of Dollars was an unauthorized remake of Akira Kurosawa's Yojimbo, and Toho, the company who produced said film, successfully sued for monetary compensation. The success of A Fistful of Dollars led Leone to quickly go into production on a loose sequel for a few dollars more. It again starred Eastwood, but also had a key new addition to the cast, Lee Van Cleef. It revived his ailing career, and he would go on to star in several spaghetti westerns. Van Cleef's character is looking for revenge, something that would become incredibly common in the genre. He and Eastwood's characters are bounty hunters, a profession that would also be portrayed in many spaghetti westerns. Also, a team-up between two gunfighters, with one being older than the other, became a highly used genre trope. In this, Eastwood is referred to as Manco, as opposed to Joe, like in Fistful, but he looks and acts the exact same way. He wears the same poncho and has the same dry sense of humor. Whether or not Eastwood is actually the same character in all three films has been the matter of debate for decades and even the subject of a lawsuit. Regardless, the stories of this and Fistful are not related in any way. You could hypothetically watch the trilogy in any order you want. The cast also includes German actor Klaus Kinski, known for his collaborations with Werner Herzog in films like Aguirre the Wrath of God. 
This was the first of multiple spaghetti westerns that Kinski appeared in. The second film in the trilogy is sometimes overlooked due to its place between the original and the more famous finale, but it's certainly an excellent film. The budget was higher than for the first film, allowing it to have a bit more of an epic feel, hinting at what was to come from Leone. And then we come to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, considered by many to be the definitive spaghetti western. This one gives us Morricone's most well-known score that is instantly recognizable to people who haven't even seen the film. Unlike the previous two, the music was written while the film was being made, and it's even more of an integral part of the movie. The final part of the trilogy brought back Eastwood and Van Cleef, adding Eli Wallach to round out the three titular characters. We see further evidence of the man with no name's questionable morals as not only does he trick Towns by collecting the bounty on Eli Wallach's character Tuco before saving him from being hanged, he then abandons Tuco in the middle of nowhere with no horse. Leone's third western was by far his longest at the time, clocking in at almost three hours. After you've seen the Dollars trilogy, you might as well watch Leone's next western, Once Upon a Time in the West. Again, the protagonist, here played by Charles Bronson, is far from a nice person, and he's solely out for revenge. Leone subverted audience expectations with the villain by having him played by Henry Fonda, one of Hollywood's biggest leading men, known for films like The Grapes of Wrath and Twelve Angry Men. Fonda's villain is incredibly sadistic, to the point that he guns down an innocent child with a smile on his face. The third main character is played by two-time Oscar winner Jason Robards, who gives a fantastic performance. The film is even more of a deconstruction of the Western genre than Leone's previous films. It has many specific references to classic movies, leading philosopher Jean Baudrillard to call it the first postmodern film. Once Upon a Time in the West is similar to the Dollars trilogy, but slower and more serious. The story was worked on by two Italian directors that would later have huge careers, Dario Argento and Bernardo Bertolucci. Leone's next film and final western was Duck You Sucker. It was also released as A Fistful of Dynamite in the United States to capitalize on the Dollars trilogy, but has nothing to do with those films. Duck You Sucker is set during the Mexican Revolution that took place in the 1910s. This makes it part of the subgenre of spaghetti westerns known as the Zapata Western, named after the famous Mexican revolutionary Emiliano Zapata. It's therefore Leone's most explicitly political western, but he said the Mexican Revolution was only a symbol, and other directors would be more ideological with their Zapata westerns. It stars Oscar winner Rod Steiger, who you may know from In the Heat of the Night or On the Waterfront, and James Coburn, who appeared in The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape. This is probably Leone's most overlooked western, but it still has a lot going for it. The characters are a little more three-dimensional than usual for him, and they actually change over the course of the story. After Leone, there's a logical director to go to next, Sergio Corbucci. His films were also morally ambiguous and even more violent, as seen in one of his most famous movies, Django, which contains a gruesome scene where a man gets his ear cut off and force-fed to him. The disturbing content led to Django being banned in many countries. Corbucci's film was directly inspired by A Fistful of Dollars and has the same basic story. The title character is even similar to Eastwood as actor Franco Nero grew out some stubble and was given fake wrinkles to resemble him. Like the man with no name, Django is an incredibly skilled gunslinger that doesn't talk much. And like many protagonists in the genre, he's looking for revenge. Nero and Corbucci worked together three times and Nero would end up being one of the most popular spaghetti western actors. Corbucci's visual style was also similar to Leone, as you can see in his use of zooms, although his tend to be jerkier than Leone's. Django generated an uncountable number of ripoffs that used the name despite having no connection at all to the original. Another great team-up between Nero and Corbucci was The Mercenary, which was one of several Corbucci films scored by Morricone. Some of its characters are Mexican revolutionaries, making it an example of a Zapata western. Corbucci and Nero collaborated on another Zapata Western in 1970, Compañeros. It also stars Tomas Milian, who is in several notable spaghetti westerns. A major Corbucci Western without Nero was The Great Silence, which took the silent hero of spaghetti westerns to its extreme, with a mute protagonist. The title character is played by Jean-Louis Trontignan, known for later arthouse films like Three Colors Red and Michael Haneke's Amour. 
Also, Klaus Kinski gives a chilling performance as an evil bounty hunter. The Great Silence is unusual in that it's a western set in a snowy environment, which sets it apart visually from most entries in the genre. It's also an example of Corbucci's left-wing political ideals, since it depicts corrupt bankers and rich people hiring bounty hunters for murder. Like Leone, Corbucci wanted to subvert the conventions of the genre, and that's on full display here with one of the bleakest endings in Western history. Also worth checking out from Corbucci is The Specialists, another film with anti-authoritarian left-wing messages that shows the wealthy as oppressors. Although relatively shallow, Corbucci's Navajo Joe is a fun watch, despite awkwardly starring Burt Reynolds as a Native American. Another important early director was Duccio Tesari, who co-wrote A Fistful of Dollars. His significance is mainly due to his two Ringo films, both with music from Morricone, the first being A Pistol for Ringo. It's a comedic, light-hearted film compared to a lot of spaghetti westerns and doesn't address the dark themes of directors like Leone and Corbucci. The title character is played by Giuliano Gemma, who would become one of the bigger stars of the genre. His Ringo is much more of a talker than the man with no name or Django, and more clean cut, which fits the less cynical tone. Gemma again played a character named Ringo in The Return of Ringo, but it's a very loose sequel, and it doesn't seem to be the same person as in the first one. Both movies were quite popular, but the second one is actually considered to be of higher quality. Like with Django, Tassari's films inspired dozens of movies to use the name Ringo in their title in order to capitalize on the success of the original two. Director Sergio Solima only made three westerns, but they are well regarded among genre enthusiasts, and they have a lot of political commentary. His first, The Big Gundown, features Lee Van Cleef as a Texas lawman and Tomas Millan, with the latter appearing in all three of Salima's westerns. In Salima's second western, Face to Face, Villan gets to play off Gian Maria Volante, who played villains in the first two entries of the Dollars trilogy. Salima's films were about Mexican bandits or rebels teaming up with a white outsider, and he meant this as a commentary on the difficult relationships between third world countries and western capitalist nations like the United States. His trilogy also has some of the coolest looking credits in the genre. Eventually, Spaghetti Westerns included comedy and parody, as seen in the two Trinity films directed by Enzo Barboni, who was the cinematographer on Corbucci's Django. Both movies starred the duo of Terrence Hill and Bud Spencer, and led to them gaining international fame. They Call Me Trinity, and Trinity Is Still My Name, are full of violence and barroom brawls, but present the violence in a slapstick way. They were also some of the most successful non-Leone Spaghetti Westerns in Italy. Hill had already starred in multiple Italian westerns before these two films, like Django Prepare a Coffin and God Forgives I Don't, which also had Bud Spencer in it. Among Hill's later entries in the genre was My Name is Nobody, from director Tonino Valeri, who had been an assistant director on Fistful of Dollars and A Few Dollars More. The cast also included Henry Fonda in one of his final western roles. Valeri also made Day of Anger, one of many examples of Lee Van Cleef teaming up with a younger gunslinger, this time played by Giuliano Gemma. Day of Anger is yet another spaghetti western with awesome, colorful opening titles. An additional instance of Van Cleef partnering with someone youthful was Death Rides a Horse, a revenge film directed by Giulio Petroni. The script was written by Luciano Vincenzoni, who also worked on For a Few Dollars More, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and Corbucci's The Mercenary. After that, Petroni directed the Morricone-scored Zapata western Tepepa, starring Tomas Millan. Tepepa also has Orson Welles in a small but significant role, although he's playing a Mexican and wears unfortunate brown face makeup. Generally considered to be the first Zapata western is Damiano Damiani's A Bullet for the General, starring Kinski and Volante as revolutionary bandits. It was co-written by Franco Salinas, a Marxist who also co-wrote the famous political film The Battle of Algiers, as well as other spaghetti westerns like The Mercenary and The Big Gundam. Giorgio Stigani, who later wrote the cult classic Cannibal Holocaust, directed a few spaghetti westerns, most notably Beyond the Law with Lee Van Cleef. Director Lucio Fulci is much more famous for his later gory giallo horror films like Zombie 2 and The Beyond, but also directed westerns, including Four of the Apocalypse and Silver Saddle. 
Spaghetti westerns died out in the 1970s, and the last major one that's considered among the best is Kioma, a revenge film directed by Enzo G. Castellari and released in 1976. Franco Nero plays the title character, and it stands out among the genre by bringing in a supernatural element in the form of a witch haunting Kioma. This is just scratching the surface of the hundreds of spaghetti westerns, and I'd like to briefly mention a few more, like Cemetery Without Crosses, Django Kill, If You Live, Shoot, and If You Meet Sartana, Pray For Your Death. Spaghetti westerns had an inarguably massive influence on the western genre as a whole. As mentioned earlier, they helped kickstart the revisionist western subgenre, and moral ambiguity would become a permanent part of the genre. Furthermore, Italian westerns had an impact on all of cinema, and their influence can be seen most explicitly in the work of director Quentin Tarantino. The most obvious example is Django Unchained, which gets its title and Luis Bacalov theme song from the Corbucci film, as well as having a Franco Nero cameo. He also used music from westerns such as Death Rides a Horse and The Mercenary in Inglorious Bastards and The Dollars Trilogy in Kill Bill. Tarantino explicitly referenced films like The Mercenary and Death Rides a Horse and Kill Bill as well. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's any other topics you'd like to see a video on.